Hello everybody and welcome to today's Friday night mystery video. Halloween is a week away. So I thought I'd pick something that I had in my library that was sort of Halloweenish. We are going to be playing Planescape Torment. And this game is a classic going way back to the time of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, Icewind Dale. It's an early CRPG. Now, one thing to note is it's very text heavy. The story is fantastic from what I hear. But without further ado, let's get started. This is us. We are the Nameless One. We have 21 points to put in various stats, and I have no idea what stats we are going to need. But Khan is always good, and I think he looks like he's going to be a strength dude. So we're going to give him that. Uh, maybe a little bit of wisdom and some dex. I think would be good. We're not going to give him any charisma. Intel is kind of iffy, but uh, yeah. Let's give him 16 strength. So he starts with 30 hit points and 10 armor class. Here we go. Hey, Chief. You okay? You playing corpse or you putting the blinds on the dusties? <laughs> I thought you were a debtor for sure. What? Who are, who are you? Who am I? How about you start? Who are you? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. You can't remember your name? <laughs> well, next time you spend a night in this burg, go easy on the bub. My name's Mort. I'm trapped in here, too. Oh, trapped? Yeah. Since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. I've tried all the doors, and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. So we're locked in. Where? Uh, what is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. Mortuary? Uh, am I dead? Oh, not from where I'm standing. You got scars aplenty, though. It looks like uh, some Burke painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place a, the laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't uh, too bad, but the ones on your back? Say, it looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spell something out. Oh, well, what's it say? Huh. <laughs> looks like you come with directions. Mort clears his throat. <clears throat> Let's see. Starts with... I know you feel like you've been drinking a few cakes of sticks wash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that'll shed some light on the dark of the matter. Farod can fill you in on the rest of the chant, if he's not in the dead book already. Wow, that's a lot of wording on his back. Uh, Farad? Does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. Let's see. It goes on. Don't lose the journal, or we'll be up the sticks again. 
and whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you or they'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Farod. Oh, well, no wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have, was there one with me when I was lying here? No. You were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, looks like you got enough of a journal pinned on your body. Oh, do you know this fair old fellow? Nobody I know. But then again, I don't know many people. Still, some Berks got to know where to find Farod. Oh, once we get out of here. Okay, well, how do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are, one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Oh, uh, walking corpses? <laughs> yeah, the mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first. All right, so we're gonna attack a corpse and loot it for the key. Well, before you do that, you need to arm yourself. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves around here. So we need to search the shelves in the room for a weapon. When we find one, go to the inventory screen. It'll look like a backpack in the lower right. And arm yourself. If you wish to examine any items, right click on them in the inventory screen. That's pretty easy. All right, I'll look for one. Oh, one last thing. These corpses are slow, but getting punched by one is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting an edge on you, remember, run. They can't. Use it to keep a distance. So it's a uh, shift key and left click on the area you want to run to. All right, thanks for the advice. So say we want to run here. I would shift left I'm click, gone. and there we go. Perfect. All right, we gotta search these tables. Okay, we got some bandages. Right click on those, and they heal three hit points. Another table, let's check this one. And I see two corpses here. Aha! Uh -huh. We got ourselves a scalpel. Let's, uh. All right! You found the scalpel! Now, go get those corpses. And don't worry, I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Yeah, I guess he's not gonna be much help. All right. So A key toggles attack, but I have to uh, equip it. So I'm gonna go to our inventory. And... Fist, quick weapon. There. Okay. And then we just hit A and that'll attack. Uh, let's see. This corpse looks like it's been dead for several years. The skin along its forehead is peeled back, revealing its chalk white skull. Someone has chiseled the number 569 onto the exposed bone. I'm looking for a key. Do you have one? 
Uh, Chief, they can't hear you. They're dead. Well, you're dead and you're talking to me. Uh, yeah, but I'm special. Death couldn't kill my zest for life. These corpses here? Huh. They probably didn't have much personality to begin with. I see. Look, Chief. Watching you try to swap the chant with these corpses ain't gonna do much for my morale. Let's leave the talk for the barmies, all right? All right, let's go. Die. <laughs> we got a bandage. No key. All right, let's get this one. Preparation room key. There we go. Uh, this kind of looks like a door. Let's see if we can open it. I have a key. Probably put it in my action slot. Probably want to put these in there too, don't we? Maybe it tells me, when using keys, you only need to have them in your inventory. In some cases, the key will vanish after it's used. This is done when the keys no longer need it. Oh, it just has to be in my inventory. Alright. So we'll take it out of the quick slot, put it back in my inventory. What about this one? There we go. And the key's gone. Alright. And we have some more corpses. Hey, some advice, Chief. I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in the dead book than necessary. Especially the Fims. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. Yeah, you got a good point. Let's see, we gotta find this Farod fellow. Look, Chief, it's obvious you're still a little addled after your kiss with death. So I got two bits of advice. If you got questions, ask me. Okay, there's a talk option from the quick menu. And then left click on the party member you wanna talk to. All right, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Second. If you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. Well, if I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Well, start a new one, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here. Hmm, all right. Couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one. To access your journal, select the button on the quick menu. Your journal will automatically be updated throughout the game. All right, let's go. Updated my journal. Let's take a look at this. Combat log, quick loot. Mage spell book. Journal. Yep, find Farod and find our missing journal. That's our quests. But we can also read all the conversations. So if we miss something, thank God I don't have to take notes. <laughs> I'm like, they're telling me to write it down. I go, no God, where's I gotta find some paper. And beasts we kill. We'll go there. Farod and my journal. So these are just empty tables, yeah. There's another door. Let's let's check the rooms out before we go 
through any doors or anything. That's where we came from. So it looks like we have to go through here. Hopefully it's not locked. Because it couldn't hurt to look for more stuff. Maybe a better weapon. Here we got 13 copper commons. I'm rich and fist irons. Okay. What we're gonna do is see if those are probably better than the scalpel. Yeah, two to four crushing. Not usable by mages. Alright, we'll try that. that, we got that. Here's another one. Oh. Nothing. Oh! Who's this? talk to him. His name is Dahl. This scribe looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow, like old parchment. Charcoal gray eyes lie within an angular face, and a large white beard flows down the front of his robes like a waterfall. His breathing is ragged and irregular, but even his occasional coughing does not slow the scratching of his quill pen. Uh, hello? Whoa, Chief, what are you doing? Well, I was going to speak with the scribe. He might know something about how I got here. Look! Rattle in your bone box with dusties should be the last thing. Oh, that's a dusty. Okay. Before Mort can finish his rant, the scribe begins coughing violently. After a moment or two, the coughing spell dies down, and the scribe's breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. And we especially shouldn't be swapping the chant with sick dusties. Come on, let's leave. The quicker we give this place to laugh, the bet. Before more can finish, the scribe's gray eyes flicker to you. The weight of years hangs heavy upon me, restless one. He places down his quill. But I do not yet count deafness among my ailments. Oops. <laughs> oh, restless one, you know me? Uh, know you? I... There is a trace of bitterness on the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, restless one, no more than you have known yourself. He's silent for a moment. For you have forgotten, have you not? Well, who are you? As always, the question. And the wrong question, as always. He bows slightly, but the movement suddenly sends him into a bat of coffin. I... He pauses for a moment, then catches his breath. I am Dahl. Well, can you answer some questions? Updated my journal. Very well. What did you wish to know? Oh, gosh. 
How did I get here? Dahl snorts in contempt, as if he finds the memory repugnant. Your moldy chariot ferried you to the mortuary, restless one. You would think you were royalty based on the number of loyal subjects that lay stinking and festering upon the cart that carried you. Oh, I have other questions. How do I get out of here? Hmm. The front gate is the most obvious exit, but they will not let anyone other than Dustman pass. Dahl breaks into a cough, then continues. One of the guides by the front gate has a key to it, but it's unlikely he will open it for you unless you are extremely persuasive. I see. What else can I ask him? So, what do you do here? I'm a scribe, a cataloger of all the shells that come to the mortuary. As long as the stream of corpses flows through, I shall remain at my post. I see. Can you tell me more about this mortuary? Well, this is where the dead are brought to be interred or cremated. It is our responsibility as dustmen to care for the dead, those who have left the shadow of life and walk the path to true death. Your wounds must have exacted a heavy toll if you do not recognize this place. It's almost your home. What? What is this true death? True death is non-existence. A state devoid of reason, of sensation, of passion. A state of purity. Uh, well, shoot. I want to get back to the questions that he gave me before. Why do you call me Restless One? Restless is as good a term as any. Something keeps you here, does it not? Something that must be resolved. Some passion that must be quenched before you can go to true death. <sighs> hmm. Here we go. Uh, Sigil. Sigil is our fair city. Oh, okay. I guess, uh, that's it. I don't need to know anything else right now. As you turn to leave, Dahl speaks. But know this, I do not envy you, restless one. To be reborn as you would be a curse that I could not bear. You must come to terms with it. At some point, your path will return you here. It's the way of things. Well, then, perhaps we're going to meet again, doll. Eh, uh, he wasn't really helpful. What's this? This gate looks sealed shut. There's no lock or other means of opening it. I don't think any of these dead bodies have anything on them. So, let's see. Can't go in there. I don't really want to kill any of these guys. But we may have to. Because so I think we went searched all this stuff. Is there another way out? Do we have a map? We do. Receiving rooms. Oh, there's stairs, but we couldn't get the door open because it was right to here. Um, it looks like it's a circle situation. 
So we gotta find another key. I guess we're gonna kill some... Some more guys. The number 1201 has been inked on the forehead of this corpse, and the ink has run down his eyes, cheeks, and jaw. As you follow the ink tears down his face, you notice it has run into the stitching, sealing the corpse's lips, and has caught on what looks like the corner of a note stuck in his mouth. Well, let's take the note. The note has mingled with the ichor in the zombie's mouth. If you try to pull the paper out through the cross stitches, it would tear the paper to shreds. Packing up the corpse to get at it looks like it would destroy the note. You'll need to find a delicate way to remove the stitches before removing the note. Well, let's use our scalpel and cut through the stitches. You deftly slice through the stitches, sealing the corpse's mouth, and the jaw sags open. You carefully pull the note from the corpse's mouth. Despite the condition of the paper, the writing on it still appears legible. To read notes, place them in your inventory and right-click on them. Okay. Let's leave the corpse in peace. And we shall check our inventory. This is a foul-smelling note retrieved from the mouth of one of the mortuary zombies. It looks like it was sewn into the corpse's mouth by accident. Despite its condition, the writing is legible. Please, to whatever dustman reads this, I beg of you. I know of my legal obligation under the terms of the dead contract, but I am prepared to offer more than my signing fee if you will cremate my body rather than raising it. I have arranged for this note to be left with my body upon my death. If you are reading this, then please use this note as instructed, and accept the result in exchange for my contracted duty. Let my contract number serve as the key. It looks like the corpse was too late to prevent the raising, but you notice that beneath the writing is a diagram. It looks like directions or folding the parchment into a strange pattern. Okay, if you're ever capable of examining something further, uh, a use button will appear for the object in this examine screen. And this button will, right here, allow you to do something further. So let's click it. Oh. This foul-smelling note has a strange-looking diagram inscribed. It looks as if it's instructing you to fold the corners of the note so their points touch the center. There's a series of strange marks on each corner. One mark on the upper right and two marks on the lower left. Three marks on the lower left and no marks on the upper left. One on the upper right. Okay, we, we fold it so it points to the center. And then the next one was... lower right okay and then the third three marks lower left okay and then we'll fold the upper left Uh, apparently we didn't do it right. We're going to try this. One on the upper right. Two on the lower right. Then we'll do the one that uh, has nothing on it, which is the upper left. And um, 
fold the lower left corner inwards. Three marks on the lower left. We don't want that one. The upper right, didn't we have an upper right already? Upper right. We already did that. Okay. As you fold the upper right corner back to the center, the lower left corner mirrors the action until all the corners touch in the center. You watch for a moment and the corners of the paper rise up, turning the note into a small four-sided paper pyramid. Now I did that by putting, using this 1201 as a clue. That's how I figured it out and it worked. Open the sides of the pyramid. You peel back the sides of the pyramid and the paper disintegrates to dust. Inside is a small triangular shaped earring. It catches the light and gleams brightly. Ooh. Well, well, what did we get? You receive this small earring. Uh, some items are magical. Okay, require that they be identified before they can be used. If you cannot determine what an item is at first glance, you may need to take it to someone with a higher lore skill. I didn't know I had a lore skill. Let's try to identify it. Oh, yeah, we can't. We don't have a scroll or a spell. All right. Can he identify it? I don't think so. <laughs> Can we wear it? I'll put it on. What could go wrong, right? Okay, so that was 1201, but that didn't help us with the key. Let's try this guy. He's shuffling from slab to slab, bandaging the corpses. The number 396 is on his left temple. And his lips are stitched closed. You notice the corpse is carrying a roll of bandages. They look usable. Try to take them. You snake your hand out and take the roll of bandages. The corpse doesn't even seem to notice. It continues going through the motions. Can I examine it again? Um, leave him in peace. All right. Now the, the skull said don't mess with the ladies. And I think that's a lady. Um, and so is that. I think we tried this. No! There we go. Sweet. I wonder if it's an earring. No idea. Okay, we're not gonna accost any of these corpses until we look around to see if there's anything else of interest in here. Oh, that's another door. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We're not ready yet. I mean, it looks like these are all ways to different areas. No. Okay. Let's, um... Let's go down here. There's somebody that looks different. I Vene. 
You see a slight young woman with pale features. The sunken flesh around her cheeks and neck makes her appear as if she's starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, prodding the chest with a finger. Hello? The woman does not respond. She seems too intent on the body in front of her. As you watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands. Her fingers are like talons. They're darting in and out of the corpse's chest cavity like knives, removing organs. What's wrong with your hands? She makes no response. Updated my journal. Mort. Uh, she's a tiefling, chief. They got fiend blood in their veins, usually cause some ancestor of theirs shared knickers with one demon or another. Makes some of them addled in the head, and addled looking too. Oh, well let's tap her shoulder. The woman jumps and whips around to face you. Her eyes are rotting yellow with small orange dots for pupils. As she sees you, her expression changes from surprise to irritation. She frowns at you. Greetings? She doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward, squinting as if she can't quite make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes must make her terribly nearsighted. You! She clacks her taloned fingers together. Fine thread and embalming juice. Bring here. Go. Go, go. Oh, she thinks I'm one of these guys. So we gotta find thread and embalming juice. Updated my journal. I don't really want to talk to her right now. Let's find this thread and juice that she needs. Lord only knows where it might be. There's another door, but um, let's let's check over here first. Okay. Talk to this guy. This heavily stitched corpse is shuffling lazily back and forth between two slabs. The number 506 has been stitched on its forehead, and the side of his neck, and his right arm in fact, the skin of this peeling corpse has been sewn up with so many stitches its skin looks like a bizarre street map. Let's examine the stitches. The stitches encircle the corpse running from its arms across its chest, up its neck, and into the damp mass of white hair. As you follow the crossroads of stitches, you notice someone has jammed a needle into the corpse's forehead. The needle is attached to a thread, stitching up the side of the skull. You could probably unravel it if you had something to cut the thread. We're going to cut it with our scalpel and then pull out the needle and thread. You slice the thread neatly with the scalpel and then pluck out the needle and pull the stitches out. As you do, the skin covering the forehead peels back to reveal the corpse's chalk white skull, where, to your surprise, the number 78 has been chiseled. Huh. Seems you got two different designations there, uh, corpsey. The corpse stares straight ahead, oblivious. Huh. Let's go back. We needed embalming, though, didn't we? I 
think we're, we're not done. What the journal? Embalming fluid. Okay, so one of the guys should have embalming fluid. I think we talked to both of these dudes. He had something else I could say, I think. Oh, there's this guy. No. Okay, I guess not. Let's talk to this one. This corpse, 985, has stopped dead in its tracks. Judging from the condition of his left leg, it looks as if some sort of tomb rot or corpse mold has eaten through its knee. The corpse is wobbling unsteadily back and forth, trying to keep its balance. Give him a push. Uh, Chief? You might not want... There's a crack from the corpse's left leg, and the body falls like a dead tree. Its torso strikes the stone flagstones and shatters like a rotten melon, filth and ichor gurgling from the cavity. To your surprise, no one seems to have noticed the corpse's collapse. And even stranger, the left leg remained standing where the body was, as if at attention. After a moment, the leg falls over with a wet thump. As you gaze upon the putrefied remains of the corpse, you notice that its left arm seems intact. It has snapped from the torso during the fall, and it doesn't appear to have been touched by the tomb rot. Hmm, I wonder if I could make use of that arm. Really? Well, how? How do I make use of that arm? Oh, it's a weapon. One to six crushing. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I could, I guess I could put that on. Uh, seems to be a apropos weapon for this area. Alright, we need to find some embalming stuff. I've talked to all the dead dudes. Let's, uh... Let's see if we can open this door. Maybe it's not in there. Alright, let's look at our map. in this part. Oh, there's another dude. Let's talk to him. The shambling corpse gazes at you with vacant eyes. The number 821 is carved into his forehead, and his lips have been stitched closed. The faint smell of formaldehyde emanates from the body. So, he's not going to talk to me. Anything interesting? Well, at least it blinks in surprise. Eh, hey, what? You're not a zombie. Who are you? Updated my journal. Oh, the zombie's trying to respond behind stitched lips. He has a peculiar, half-frightened, half-angry expression. Who are you? What do you want? Okay, let's see. I'm looking for a way out of here. Can you help me? The zombie doesn't seem to have heard you. He looks you up and down for a few minutes and then frowns. What you do here? His eyes narrow suspiciously. You spy on Dusties? Oh. Yes, I'm spying on the Dusties. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> you spy? You it sell? Uh, huh? Mort breaks in whispering. 
by the powers, this Burke's an anarchist. Posing as a zombie's got to be the first for those adult sods. Uh, an anarchist? Updated my journal. Their faction. Mort looks like he's about to let loose a torrent of insults, and then notices the zombie staring at you both, listening. They want to liberate everyone from the chains of government. Tear down the old, establish a new order with no order at all. <laughs> well. Uh, let's lie. That seems like a noble pursuit. Any anarchist dedicated to such a lofty goal is definitely a friend of mine. The zombie nods at this, and you think you detect him puffing up a little in pride behind his zombie disguise. Can you help me escape? Well, what did you do? I got trapped in here. I need to get out. He was silent for a moment, and then nods slightly, as if in understanding. Well, why should I help you? You look like someone who'd much rather disguise themselves as a corpse than be one. Is that reason enough? He looks you up and down as if wondering if he can take you. He stares at your scars and then decides against it. Huh. You can escape through the portals. Uh, the portals? Portals. The zombie waves around the area. Portals everywhere. Can you show me one of these portals? If you want out, go to the arch on first floor. Northwest rum. You need fungar bone. Shape of a crook. He holds up his index finger and bends it into a crook. Then you have key. Go to arch, jump to secret crypt, and then escape from there. Secret escape route. You can rest there. A crooked finger bone. Where am I supposed to find one of those? Updated my journal. He shrugs. Uh, must be one round somewhere. Uh, look in storage rooms on the upper floor. Maybe there. All right. We'll go upstairs for this bone, and then go to the first floor. Got it. Well, that was very helpful, except we still need some uh, embalming fluid. In this room, does it have another door? It does. got a door here too. Oh, a jar of embalming fluid. There we go. Let's get back and turn this stuff in. Complete this quest and then we can move forward. I think she's right in here. You see, Iveen, she's still dissecting the corpse chest with her talons. Watch her and study the motions with her hands. Updated my journal. As you study the motion of her hands, you feel a prickling along your scalp, and then suddenly you find your vision swimming, blurring, until... Oh no, what did I do? You are standing in front of a freshly slain corpse, 
rigor mortis making a mockery of its smile. The number 42 has been stitched on its scalp. The zombie's lying on a slab, and you have just finished stitching up his chest. You have placed something inside, something that may prove useful. Keep these things safe and wait for my return. We hear this. The memory of your voice is an echo, strange and hollow to your ears. You cross your arms in front of your chest, and to your surprise, the corpse does too. After a moment, its hands fall back to its sides as it does, the vision fades until you're watching Ivan's hands make their stitching motions once more. I regained a memory. Memories can give you additional experience points, skills, and may even lead to you gaining something else of value later. Awesome! Let's tap her and get her attention. She turns, sees you, and then frowns. Dumb zombies! Find thread and fluid, bring here. Oh, here you go. Updated my journal. Oh, well, we got some XP for that. Without missing a beat, Ivine snaps the thread from your hands and hooks it around one of her talons, then begins sewing up the corpse's chest. She then takes the embalming fluid and begins to apply a layer to the corpse. We're gonna wait. Within minutes, she's finished. She clicks her talons and then turns to face you. To your surprise, she extends her hand and drags her talons along your arms and chest. Uh, it's not that I'm not flattered, but... Looks like you have a new friend, Chief. You two need some time together? Oh, stow it, Mort. As she traces your arms and chest, you suddenly notice she seems to be examining your scars. She withdraws her talons and clicks them twice, then bends forward and examines some of the tattoos on your chest. Hmm. Who write on you? Hivers do that? No respect for zombies. Zombies not paintings. She sniffs and then pokes one of your scars. This one, bad shape, many scars. No preserves. Let's wait. Her talons suddenly hook into the thread you brought her, and lightning-like, she jabs another talon into the skin near one of your scars. It feels barely more than a pinprick, but it looks like she's about to start stitching you up. Um. I don't think I want to let her do that. Let's let's leave. Do I want to let her? Le no. Dang it! I'm I'm curious. Let's let her work. Updated my journal. Oh, I got max a HP point. Nice. The sensation is curiously painless as Ivine begins to stitch up your scars. When she's done, she sniffs you frowns and then stabs her fingers into the embalming fluid. Within minutes, she has dabbed your body with the fluid and strangely enough, it makes you feel better. Well, hey then, we'll just let her continue. This may be the second time in my life I'm thankful I don't have a nose. <laughs> Ivine puts the last touches on your body gives you another sniff, nods, and then makes a shooing motion with her talons. Done. Go. Go. All right. That was weird. We need to continue. There wasn't anything in here. We need to come back in this room. There is a gate right here. But we're going to check this room out, see if there's anything interesting we can loot before we do that. And it looks like we can go up here. So we need to go up before we go down. That goes down. Alright. So let's, uh, check this out. 
Oh, it's locked. Okay. Here's something. Oh. But let's complete the circle. Oh, that one is logged. We can't. I think that's the last. Yeah, that's the last. Which might be the way out. All right, let's see if we can go upstairs. Done. Oh, what's this? This way and no, I don't know what this is. Let's talk to the skeleton. This skeleton number 748, according to the number chiseled on its brow, is odd only in that some of its teeth appear to be false, made of reddish brown stone. They're clearly not valuable, as its caretakers would have otherwise removed them. Examine him carefully. Someone has taken care to bind the bones of this skeleton with leather straps woven around the body in such a pattern that they resemble muscles and tendons. The straps are secured to metal bolts punched into the skeleton's joints. This skeleton looks like it has seen a great deal of service. Many of its bones are chipped and its numerous fractures are bound with sealant and foul-smelling glue. Well, it's an option. Let's give it a go. Whoa, Chief! That's vandalism. Those bolts are probably the only thing holding that bag of bones together. Necromancy only goes so far with these old fellas, you know. Oh, well, I don't want to cause any permanent damage, but... There's, there's somebody there. Maybe we shouldn't. All right, maybe I can come back and do it later. Oh, it's not a problem. I just wasn't sure if you knew that or not. Oh, okay. Well, let's pry a bolt then. You pull at the iron bolts with all your strength. And after a few moments of tugging, you rip the bolts from the joints. The skeleton collapses, some of his bones still twitching. Oh, sorry about that, bones. But we got a club. One to six crushing. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just do that. And I did get a leather strip. What's this for? It looks pretty strong, he says. I guess we just don't know yet. All right, that's a dustman. I think we want to avoid them. Well, they're all over the place here. Coming over to me. This could be bad. Yes, she is. The dustman regards you with a stony gaze. Are you lost? Yes. I will summon a guard to direct you out. Hold a moment. Oh. Snap her neck before she can call out, or leave quickly. No, let's snap her neck. Before the dustman can utter a word, your hands clamp onto her temples, and you twist her head sharply to the left. I can't have you alerting your friends. 
There's a crack and the dustman falls limp in your arms. Better you than me, Dusty. To your surprise, the act seemed instinctual. As if you had done it many times before. With this thought comes the stirring of another memory. But it's not strong enough to surface. We still got some XP for that. Oh, we got a lot of XP for that. Oh, she dropped some stuff. Ooh, a jagged knife, copper earring, and dustman robes. Oh my gosh, we could probably put those on. This knife? Eh, uh, it's used by priests. So that's not good. What is this earring? Something that enjoys eating metal. It's bent on one side and bears teeth marks. Copper earring. Well, I'm not, I've got this on, so I'm not gonna put that on. anything else interesting in here. We're still looking for some kind of a crowbar. Junk. Collection of junk. Small springs, broken bolts, and a cracked gear. It looks like someone felt these pieces might be useful, but they seem pretty useless to me. Oh, this is a door that goes back down. It's locked. Okay. All right. What we're going to do is... Ooh. What is this? Kind of a pit? Oh, there's a bookcase over there. Let's talk to this guy. The number 613 are cut into his corpse forehead, but an inch of shredded leathery skin separates the one and the three. Looking closely, you can barely make out a two carved there. Huh. So, anything interesting going on? <laughs> if that dustman leaves, we will search this bookcase. Sanctum key. Oh, Ooh, now that's bound to be good. Oh, is this the sanctum? Crowbar, though. But we were gonna. We're, we'll go down. And we can go down again. I'm gone. This wasn't where we were before, was it? Oh, is this where we? This is where we started. All right. Let's go back up. I'm gone. Oh wait, let's check this. Nope. Okay, so that wasn't helpful. Well, it is helpful. You can go down that way. 
Um, we didn't find any kind of a crowbar thing. Let's look over here. This looks like something. Okay, we got three guys standing here doing nothing. Let's check out this stuff. Locked. A dustbin request. Contact the necromancer responsible for raising contractual worker 42. I know he's examined the skeleton before, but I'm certain the initial raising of the body was warped. The worker still responds to commands, but when it has completed a task, it resumes pacing in the same circular pattern it did before. Dahl recently informed me that Worker 42 exhibited that same pattern when it was a zombie decades ago. There may be a soul echo in the marrow, or the skeleton's age may have caused the magic animating him to decay. One of the initiates suggested it may be following an order issued by a higher ranking dustman in the past, but I have found no records of such an order. Whatever the reason, the matter is to be resolved, or the worker replaced. Okay, there is a zombie there. Or a skeleton, maybe. Oh, look at there! Iron pry bar. That's what we needed. So now, we're going to go down. I think we'll try running. Where was that exit? Okay, and now we'll go down. And we look like a dusty. I'm gone. We're going to try to leave. Oh. This is a door. Failed. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh-oh. You see a stern-looking man in black robes. He's glaring at you suspiciously. Uh, state your business. Uh, my business is my own. You would do well to mind your own affairs. The dustman's eyes narrow to slits and his hands fall on the dagger by his side. He looks as if he's about to summon the other guards. All right, let's snap his neck. Before the dustman can utter a word, your hands clamp into his temples and you twist his head sharply to the left. Can't have you alerting your friends. Better you than me, Dusty. Ooh. More stuff. What about this guy? My business is my own. Snap his neck as well. You tuck them into the shadows. Still doesn't unlock this door. Well, everybody, I think this we're going to end the video here. This game is really a lot of fun. I barely scratched the surface. Thank you for joining me. Please give a like and subscribe. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.